Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're back. Today we're gonna to talk about a few summer expenses that you might wanna consider budgeting for. These are gonna be real life things that actually happened to me um, this summer and what I have done to rectify that situation. The first thing that happened was our air conditioner broke in our car. Now in 2014, we bought a house and we moved in on April the 22nd and by the first week of July, that air conditioning unit had already broken. Now we did have a home warranty and so we called the number and we asked about that and they said it'd be a $7 copay and they could send somebody out in two weeks. Two weeks in Florida? I don't think so. So, I called a few companies in my local area and they all had availability. So, I called the home warranty company back again and I was like, hey, what is up with this? You know, there's all of these companies. What do you mean that no one is available for two weeks? Well, then I found out about the fine print in that agreement for the home warranty. They have a special certification process because apparently it's not okay that you've actually gone to HVAC school and gotten your little whatever you get license for going to HVAC school. You have to go through yet another certification so that their company knows that you are smart enough or something, I don't know. So that company was over an hour away from my home. No wonder it was gonna take two weeks for them to squeeze out the time to get to my house during peak air conditioning breaking season. So I decided that day we were gonna start self-insuring and that meant sinking funds. So we now have the sinking funds that are solely for air conditioning repair. This is not air condition or just regular repair for the house. This isn't talking about when your kid slams the door and the handle falls off. This is not repair. Uh, when your dog bites your windowsill, that has happened to me too. Um, but it is specifically just for air conditioning units. And those units include the ones in my house and the ones in my car. Now, I may start splitting those up and to another sinking fund so that it's just air conditioning repair for the car and then air conditioning repair for the house. I'm not really sure about that yet. So right at the beginning of June, yeah, right at the beginning of June, June the 3rd or 4th or so, we had our final performance for music and everything was fine on the way down there, but that evening on the way back, our air conditioning compressor in the car blew and the oil caught on fire and everything. It was quite um, an ordeal. So that was a lot of fun. It is fixed now and the air conditioning is nice and cold and I am super thankful for a husband that can do that kind of stuff. So be prepared for your air conditioner to break because every year since 2014, one or two air conditioners in our house or car have broken. The second expense we're going to talk about has to do with birthdays. Now, my friend Mary over at A Merry Life on a Budget, I'm going to link her right up here. She did a video about summer expenses and it involves a lot of things that are not in this video, so I highly recommend you watch hers as well. But she talks about birthdays and Lydia Sin was talking about giving birth to her first summer baby and she was talking to the labor and delivery team that's going to help her do that and they said that statistically for their hospital the highest amount of births happen during June, July, and August and then it tapers down in September significantly. So what does that mean for us as adults? Well, if your state has you register your vehicle around your birth date, it means it's time to renew your car tags. And so that is something that happened to me. Now I did know that this was gonna happen and it is in my thinking funds now, but in previous years, it has really snuck up on me, especially when I decided to do the two year option in one year. So what that means is that I pay for two years of registration up front, and then I get to skip that one year and I don't have to think about it. 
And so that made it easier for me to forget about it when it was time to pay it again. So it's about $100 if I do the two-year option, it's about a little less than $50 per year to register my car in my county. And so I take that out um, on my Every Dollar app in the sinking fund. And then to remind myself to transfer that money out of savings and back into checking, I set myself a Google notification on my calendar. So every odd year, I have to make sure that I have that notification set and transfer it into my checking account in time to pay for my car tax. So those are two things that happen every summer that I need to be thinking about. And third, we're going to talk about a different kind of party, not a birthday party. This party is something that our church does every year. And I volunteer to work it. My children love to attend it. And we help fund this meeting as well. And so what that means is I need to be setting aside some money for that every single month on top of all of our other plans for the summer. It usually only takes about $15 a month if I do it this way to um, budget away what we put into the meeting um, aside from our volunteer time. Usually my kids go ahead and chip in as well with whatever money that they have earned during the summer. And this party takes place at the very end of summer. It's kind of like an end of summer and beginning of the school year kind of kickoff thing. They call it the youth rally. It's a lot of fun. And we usually serve a giant ice cream sundae thing. And we have a great time there. So that is three expenses that we have they recur every summer and I need to think about them and those are outside of like higher electricity bills or higher water bills or things like that or vacation you know so I hope that that helps you kind of get an idea of budgeting and how we handle some summer expenses Thank you for watching. Bye.